Welcome to Wednesday. It's the last day of January 2024. Your day weather podcast brought to you by Hot Springs County Travel and Tourism, reminding you with the colder weather and snow coming, you can find yourself always in hot water. In Thermopolis, go to thermopolis.com to find out more. Well, a pattern change is certainly on the way. In the meantime, everybody's enjoying the weather. I mean, really enjoying it, like those two guys right there. The beautiful weather, almost spring-like weather conditions that are across the Intermountain West will hold on today and for a lot of areas, at least along the Continental Divide through tomorrow. As we get into Friday and the weekend is when things begin to change and get a lot more interesting around here if you're a weather watcher. Now, we will start to see rain hitting the West Coast tonight. So California, Washington, Oregon will be getting into the weather here over the next 24 hours. Then we're gonna see the first slug of moisture move west to east off the coast into the Great Basin states and basically get up to the Continental Divide by late Friday. Then overnight Friday into Saturday and Sunday is when areas of rain and snow will develop along and east of the divide. As we've been mentioning, since this system cannot connect to any really cold Canadian air, a fair amount of this storm and a fairly large area of real estate in the central high plains are just gonna get rain or a little bit of a rain snow mix. It'll be the higher elevations of Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, the Black Hills of South Dakota that see the best chance of accumulating snow because of that fact. And also because of the fact that it's pretty mild out there right now. Well, it'll take the precipitation falling and starting as rain to cool off the atmosphere to cool things off. It's really, more like a spring pattern. This looks like something we would see in April. We are gonna have travel and livestock concerns in the region, so stay tuned. Now, we still have a low confidence in the axis of where the heaviest precipitation will be. We're very confident that many of you will get rained and snowed on. The question is, is where is going to be the most concentrated area where we may see the heaviest snowfall? And we're looking at it meandering west to east this axis, and we'll take a little bit of a closer look at that. Long-term trends really do look busy. This recent stretch of fair weather has been great, but we're about ready to go into a pattern where, while there will be gaps between storms, we're not gonna have these long gaps like we just have gone through here recently. Now, if you wanna look up in a meteorological textbook and find a picture of a textbook mid-latitude cyclone, here it is. Isn't that gorgeous? It's almost like you just, it almost doesn't look real in terms of how well it's put together, but our high resolution satellites that we have now just really are able to show us all this details. There's that deep storm off the coast of Washington and Oregon, just a beautiful cyclone there. It's pumping up the area of high pressure that's over the Intermountain West and Rockies right here. This system is reaching its maturity. And as it reaches its maturity, it's gonna break into two pieces. And it's that first piece that breaks off that comes into the Rockies and High Plains this weekend. But you can see the magnitude and the scope and the power of this storm system. Look how big it is. It is absolutely huge. So this storm system is gonna be causing a lot of weather over the next 24 to 48 hours. Now, if we take a look at the water vapor, there's the center of the low right there. You see the orange? This is the dry air that is over the Intermountain West giving us another couple of days of very nice conditions. We got humidities increasing up here from the south, but that won't do much yet. Then you can see the deeper precipitation and water vapor coming into the coast right now. We are going to show you this map here in the coming days. This will get a lot more busy, but we already have winter weather advisories, winter storm warnings, now developing further east into the mountains as that storm approaches. And in the coming days, we'll see this map get a lot more busy across the west. So here we are today. You can see the deep storm off the west coast. This is by Saturday. By Saturday, a piece breaks off from the main storm and comes down into southeast Colorado and northern New Mexico. It runs into this big high. And as we've been showing you, the combination of the circulations will work together to draw moisture northwestward across the region, bringing high humidity air from the Gulf all the way in like this, but it's also a system that's bringing colder and moist air in from the Pacific as well. So we have the Pacific and the Gulf of Mexico kind of working in unison here. That's something you tend to see 
in the spring. And that's why the spring storms tend to be much more productive with higher water content storms. Higher water content snow, higher water content that helps the snowpack really go. And that's uh, one reason why the snowpack is going to get a big boost in this pattern here over the next several days. So this is where we are Saturday. By Monday, that storm is going to go along the Gulf Coast. That high pressure ridge maintains itself. Yep, and here's another low right here. This low will be coming in later in the week, bringing another round of heavy precipitation to the West Coast. So basically, the hits will keep coming to the West Coast and eventually moving inland. So let's take a look. We did this yesterday. This is where we're trying to get an idea of where the heavier precipitation is going to be. These blue lines represent where the air is converging around the low and from the West Coast low right here where winds aloft. When you push air together, it can't go into the ground. It has to go up. And when you push the air together, you get this convergence on either side of this line. The convergence boundary is where you're going to likely have the axis of the heavier precipitation want to fall. The trick is, is based on the model, we could have the axis like what we're seeing on the European model, the heavier precipitation kind of being like this, kind of like shaped like a football on the back side of the system. But these subtle little differences is where we have low confidence. If we look at the Canadian, well, the axis of the heavier precipitation looks to be more like this, more central and eastern areas. And the GFS models, kind of like the Canadian, going in like this. Now, that may to you not look like much of a difference, but it could really be a really big difference depending on where you live and whether or not this system ends up being just a minor one or a little bit more significant. To help us get through this quandary of where the axis of the heavier moisture is going to be, and this is a map that shows us where the precipitation is forecasted to fall between now and Monday, we're going to use what's called the NBM. This is a tool called the National Blend of Models. Now, it kind of makes sense, right? Well, instead of just relying on one of these models to come up with our forecast, let's blend them together, kind of average them out and then see what comes out of it. Now, this is a good way to kind of average things out because in reality, the models that I show you are never going to get it exactly right. So if we merge them together, put them in a pot and stir it, this is what we end up with. So I think this is probably the best way to represent to you where we think the heavier precipitation is going to be. So you can see this tap of moisture right here coming up into Wyoming, western Nebraska. Western South Dakota, the Black Hills, it's looking a little bit more likely you're going to finally get some snow. And there could be a good fetch of moisture all the way up into Montana. And you can see the heavier snows in the mountains of southern Wyoming and northern Colorado. Then, of course, you can see what's going on into the interior west. Now, a lot of this you're going to see here is going to be in the form of rain. So this just basically kind of gives us what the average of all the models is. Notice that here in southwestern Wyoming, there's a bit of a snow hole a bit of a snow hole here in the Bighorn Basin because the winds will be down sloping off the mountain ranges into those two areas. But upslope on the east side of the mountain ranges as those winds get drawn up from the southeast. So let's convert that uh, to snow, which we'll do here in a minute. Look at the rains between now and Monday in California. We've got the potential for over six inches of rain right on the coastal areas very, very heavy rain. Those coastal areas, that moisture, that storminess is pushed right on shore that lifts the atmosphere. They'll get feet, feet of snow in the Sierra Nevada. If we go a little bit closer to home, centered in on Wyoming here, this is the same graphic I just showed you, the NBM model. Just to give you a little more reference, this is water in inches. So you can see a lot of areas, more than a half inch, quarter to a half inch, the yellow area is an inch or more. Again, this is for display purposes. Don't take those numbers as exact measurements. But we convert that to snow, and you can see it's going to be the higher elevations across the divide, on either side of the divide, that will be high enough and cold enough for snowfall. There's going to be a lot of this out here that's just in the form of plain Jane rain. Also, ice is a bit of concern. As that moisture comes up over some of the colder air at night, we may have a little bit of icing in the Dakotas and Nebraska as the storm starts to develop, something that travelers will want to keep an eye on. 
Now, longer term. Now, this is by next Wednesday, the 7th of February. The lows off the coast of Florida and the storms reload. So we're going to see this system bring another round of rain and snow to the west coast. We got another one here. Eventually, what's left of this will head into the Rockies by the middle to the end of next week. Towards next weekend, this is going to come our way. So the pattern is changing. It's going to get a lot more active. And what I'm showing you here is a, a 30 day average of the 500 millibars at 18,000 feet. And I show you the 500 millibar chart all the time because that's where most of the weather is going to get generated. What I want you to, to get from this, this goes through from this weekend through March 5th. Basically, it's going to be roughly the next 32 days or so. What the blue represents is where more often than not, low pressure will be. And the red shows more often where high pressure is going to be. If we were to average all the 30 days up, what this blue represents is basically this is what the storm track is going to be. This is classic what we would see with a, an El Nino that's reached its peak. This El Nino is going to start to weaken rapidly in the coming weeks, but it's always a lag. There's always a lag. It's not, you, you don't weaken an El Nino then see the weather pattern change immediately. It's going to be a lag. This shows a very active storm track west to east across the U.S., suppressed a little bit to the south. So this means more storminess, like we're about ready to see this weekend and next week, is in the offing through the month of February into early March. So the weather is about ready to get a lot more busy again across the nation, coast to coast, over the next 30 days or so. And that just takes us only into early March. Have yourself a good Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow.